What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about that word I can't say because if I do, the social medias shut down the engagement. It rhymes with bovid. So today we're talking about whether or not intermittent fasting can reduce symptoms. This comes up because a recent study came out showing that periodic fasting was actually associated with significantly lower severe symptoms of <laughs> you guys think I'm joking, but like they will knock down your engagement for this stuff, so. I jest, but only kinda. So make sure you leave a comment. Follow the algorithm. This study was done in about 1,500 people. It followed them for a year, looked at who tested positive for look who didn't test positive for and who had more severe symptoms. Now, their parameters for fasting was basically, have you engaged in periodic fasting over the last five years? I couldn't really tell any more detail. That's what was in the, the methods. That is a super broad description of fasting. So it wasn't like I engage in at least, you know, three times a week, eight or 12 or 16 hours of fasting or whatever it is. It was just, have you fasted? That's kind of a problem maybe, but again, I understand that everybody has different like opinions of what fasting is. Some people say, well, it's a 16, eight, some people say, well, no, that's not good enough. It's 24. And some people say, well, that's not good enough. You got to fast for days on end. So I, I get it. They're trying to use a catch all, but they did show significantly lower symptoms in people who had practiced periodic fasting. Does this mean that intermittent fasting is the best thing you can do for your immune system and for preventing severe symptoms of I don't think that's what this study says. So we know that obesity and type two diabetes drastically increases your risk of developing severe symptoms to this virus. We also know that being healthy and active drastically decreases the symptoms of this virus. And so what I think this says is just these people were likely not obese and practice some form of dietary restriction. So it makes perfect sense that they would have lower symptoms. They're not equating for calories in the study. It's also just cross-sectional. So do I think it's a bad study? No, it's not a bad study because they're only doing what they can do within the constraints of the research that they're working in. Do I think it shows that intermittent fasting is somehow superior to normal caloric restriction? No, I don't because my suspicion is if they just looked at people who practiced any form of dietary restraint, that those people would have lower 19 symptoms as well. Because as we've covered multiple times, obesity, high blood sugar, high blood insulin, uh, any kind of metabolic dysregulation, those things are associated with worse outcomes from this virus. So I think if you like intermittent fasting, hey, great, cool, awesome. If you don't like intermittent fasting, I don't think this is a reason to switch to intermittent fasting if you're worried about these symptoms from this virus. I think as long as you are lean, healthy, active, non-smoking, and you don't have like bad metabolic health, which if you're lean and active, you shouldn't, then I think you're already doing the major things that are going to prevent you from getting severe symptoms from this virus. So interesting study. I don't think it shows that intermittent fasting is somehow better for 19 symptoms, but again, perhaps more research will come out and we'll learn more, but I just don't think it's that compelling of data, especially considering that there's no real comparison group other than people who were just eating the standard American diet and anything tends to be better than the standard American diet. So, all right guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you like these research breakdowns, make sure you subscribe to Reps, my research review every month we review five studies that relate to fitness and nutrition. We break them down in a way that is palatable and easy to understand, even if you don't have a science background. And we give you practical recommendations that you can put into your own nutrition and training, or if you're a coach, your client's nutrition and training, and you're gonna broaden your mind and be more resistant to BS. Sign up for reps, it's only $12.99 a month, and you get access to all our backlog of issues. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching.